getting there. Um, all right, we are moving on from the river to the sea, which can get you banned by free speech hero uh, Elon Musk. How are we doing? We have we're now a hundred days in. We're actually more than that, but we passed the hundred day mark. I think two days ago. The milestone. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, of Israel's uh, genocide on Gaza, and I feel like maybe the way to start that is with. Um, Motaz, who is a journalist in Gaza who's been doing amazing work. So we're just going to see how he wants to commemorate the first hundred days. Um, he has been so <clears throat> amazing and broadcasting the horrors. And uh, today, I think, or yesterday, he announced that one of his cameramen drone operators had been killed. Um, Unbelievable. <laughs> sorry. I, I, yeah. Was, I mean, the bravery of all those journalists over there, all the times they've been on air and people and knowing that they're now. targeted and their, their children, their families are targeted. Um, the journalist whose name is now escaping me, whose whole family was not whole family, his, I think, wife, mother, two of his children were killed once when he was on air. Then his son, who <clears throat> was also a journalist, was killed. I can't remember his name right now, but he was injured in an attack recently. They have just gotten him out. Finally, he's in Qatar getting uh, medical attention. Um but, you know, one thing, and I don't think this actually necessarily protects Motaz, but I did see he has 18 million followers on Instagram. And he just started his account or, or just sort of became visible to people outside of right. Gaza who weren't sort of like really focused before October 7th. President Biden has 19 million. I mean, that's phenomenal. And I know there's a lot of like, you know, Twitter isn't real life and social media. And, but, you know, the reason that so many young people are not swallowing the propaganda is because they are tuning into Twitter and Instagram and Telegram and watching the reality of what's happening. And they're not believing the lies that are being pushed on CNN and MSNBC and Fox and, you know, all of the network shows. So I'm so grateful that that exists, but um, it's yeah. Uh, but meanwhile, we're looking at our government out there, not even mentioning 24,000 oh 24, dead Palestinians. Their, their White House. In Biden's days, statement, he did not mention yeah. them once. He did not mention Palestinians once. It is so atrocious. He did not mention them one time. And, you know, so he wrote that and I, er, and I know Zogby also um, wrote, or sorry, that was Zogby that you just showed, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And here's this person um, was in the Obama White House also saying this might be the most shameful statement I've ever seen from an American president, not even a hypocritical genuflection toward regretting 24,000 Palestinian deaths the statement from President Joe Biden marking 100 days of captivity for hostages in Gaza. Um, you know, it really, 
again, sort of shows you the level of media control and people in power control in this country about what how they want us to view this genocide. They, they are really hanging on and the public is not buying it at all. And that's yeah. that's the beauty of what's happening right now. If you yeah. can find any silver lining in it. But yeah. I mean, even the, the fact that last week we're, we're not none of this is having an effect on anything in Israel and Palestine. It's having an effect on Democrats' chances of winning the White House. Right. But Israel has gotten what they want because Biden is is a puppet to his donor class who are a puppet to Israel, who are a puppet. Everybody is a puppet to the financial interests in why they're in this war to begin right. with. It's not about it's not about Palestinian terrorists. It's of it's about not. A couple things they want they want their port passageway that they want to be built uh to go to do it cheaper to go through palestine they they there's natural gas off the coast that's a new thing that has been discovered you know sort of recently that palestine had natural gas off their coastline which they were entitled to because of some agreement with israel that became extremely lucrative that they didn't know initially how much natural gas they had there. So there's those two things. None of this is about safety and protect. Like, why is the U.S. backing this? It's not about safe. We're not safer by committing no. a genocide and funding a genocide. Absolutely not. And, Israel, and Israelis aren't safer from this. At no, all. Israelis aren't safer. Jews aren't safer. I mean, obviously, Palestinians are not safer. Muslim Americans, Arab Americans, not safer. I mean, nobody is safer because of all this. Um, they, you know, just in terms of like the media's propaganda, they did not even air South Africa's, the, the opening statements. Where yeah. They did Imagine all you're up for, you're, you're at the Hague, you know, we're having a, uh, inter, the International Courts of Justice. Is that, is that even what ICJ means? I don't know. I'm making that up. Uh, in International Probably. Criminal, yeah, Court of Justice. Anyway, they, oh my God. They're holding a trial calling your country guilty of genocide. This is the most respected court that the U.S. propped up and created largely and got the world's buy-in. And it's super important to a lot of things that happen in the world. Um, but we're only going to show the defense in a, in a court case. Our, we're Which only is just, it's not a get it. All the they evidence said. was damning as all hell because the evidence yeah. was like, if you look at every clip we ever showed of some psycho in Israel saying something who's in leadership about wanting to kill all the people in, in Palestine, they, they aired like an hour of that shit. I mean, it went, I, I watched all of it. It was three and a half hours. They, they did not show the horrifying videos of what, is actually happening there, but they used, as you said, the people in leadership, they used their actual words, their genocidal words, and did talk about, you know, the numbers, the devastating numbers and how it was worse than Dresden. It was the bombs that we were dropping were worse than, you know, the impact, worse than Hiroshima, we, the US and Israel. Um, three and a half hours, and then the next day, basically, it was Israel just saying, we're not genocidal, they're genocidal. We respect human life. And the guy who lost his paper, which was hilarious, only because we all needed a moment of levity to see this Yahoo defending genocide. And he loses one of the pages in his you know, defense argument. He kind of is like flustered and looked around. That's the best they could come up with. Yeah, I saw a meme with a guy... A palace yeah, it was, it was like supposed to be Hamas, like, like grabbing snatch. it. Yeah. <laughs> and there, you know, there were like Hamas counters. They kept talking about Hamas. That was their big thing was Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. You know, and now, um, I don't know, are we already, well, you know, Netanyahu has said that doesn't matter what anybody says, they're not going to um, obey or follow whatever decision they come to. So either... Right. The decision will be, I mean, the, the actual end decision probably won't come for a few years, but there could be a, the, the motion that there would could, force them to have a ceasefire if they come to that 
Right. And and most Press likely mission. that would be the outcome. I mean, I from what I've looked at, right. most likely they're going to they would come out and say this is a war crime uh, or they don't have to call it a war crime. So they, they're even protected there. They just have to demand a ceasefire. They have to right. say, you know, based on what we've seen, uh, humanitarian, whatever, we, we have to have a ceasefire. The problem is they have no legal arm to do anything. Right. And that goes to, to the UN it. next. To enforce gets, anything. Right. Yeah. It gets sent to the UN as a the, the sort of enforcing arm of the ICJ where we have veto power. Yep. Which is what's going to happen, which will make even more of a mockery of, you know, because there have been several resolutions that have gone through the UN in the last hundred and two days to try to have a ceasefire. We've rejected all or uh, vetoed them. The U US has, um, you know, there's that horrific uh, iconic picture of uh, the, U the US representative raising his hand as the sole no yeah, vote. Good. Like the opposite of Kirsten Cinema putting her thumb down. Um, and yeah, and Netanyahu has said that it doesn't matter who, you know, we're not, what do you say? We're not one of the stars on your flag. We're not one of the states of the US. Nobody can tell us what to do. We'll continue doing exactly what we need to do. So that's, you know, that idea that we are part of some rules based order, I don't think most people who don't live in the US believe that anyway. But it they might don't. be a and, turning point for people in the U.S. to see. But this is where our the delusional average American delusionals. I, I don't mean that word. Sorry, but that the propagandized average American yeah. doesn't even realize that the rest of the world, other than the U.K., the U.K. did the same thing with the the, the war trials trials in, at the ICJ. UK also showed the defense and not not the case against Israel. Like, how right. do you not show the case against Israel? But yep. the rest of the world has watched this and they've yep. followed our history better than most Americans followed our history right. Right. because of our impact in the world. And so we have lost so much standing to justify anything we ever do. Yeah. And so where this comes into economic issues at some point with the U.S. is People are going to start boycotting Israeli products. That's right. And they're, they're as, going to do to them the what they did to South Africa. Of, yep. of this fight. Yep. We are also going to be impacted by that. So, I mean, that shouldn't, that shouldn't guide your, how you feel about this war, but it's economically, it's going to have an impact here. And I don't think anyone's talking about that. Well, it's obviously it's already having an impact in the Red Sea, right? And it turns out that the uh, the Houthis are the only adults in the room who are trying to stop a genocide. Um, and so now the US has classified them as terrorists also, which is just amazing. They haven't killed anybody. They have only attacked ships that are inbound or outbound from Israel as some kind of blockade to stop a genocide. Um, and now- Look at the hottie, come on. <laughs> Timothy Timothy Chalamet is what they're calling him. Um, yeah, he's got quite, he's got quite a following now. Uh, right. But you know, th the idea that blockading a country makes you terrorists should really wake up people to our own country uh, having their blockade on Cuba, Israel blockading goods coming into Gaza for decades. But now the Houthis were trying to stop a genocide. They're terrorists for their trying to blockade these ships going in and out of Israel. I mean, you know, I don't think that most people in the rest of the world, expect, like the global South, certainly they do not look at, I think they've thought of the U.S. as the biggest terrorist organization now for decades, right? They've all been right. victims of our either military, um, you know, attacks or financial attacks. And I think this, you know, what happened with Russia invading Ukraine, unprovoked, anyway, and we never even talk about that situation anymore. It's amazing. All of the people who died there for absolutely nothing, because now Zelensky is being 
pressured to accept even worse compromises than Biden said were unacceptable two years ago. But anyway, that realignment with BRICS forming their own you know, currency and being able to bypass all of the sanctions that the U.S. has imposed on other countries as a way of leveraging power, that, it, I mean, what you're saying is going to have an enormous effect. And I mean, maybe we finally get that multipolar world that I think is necessary before we destroy it. <laughs> no, it's, no it's, it's so rough though, because what, what's going to happen here, we have a convergence of shitty things happening to Americans, right? I mean, yeah. not to make it about us, but if, making it about us for a second, we've got boycotts coming, uh, Cost of goods going up. They're going to go up a lot because of the boycotts coming. Right. Uh, we've already got inflation. We've got COVID, which is going to drive goods up. Uh, prices are going to go up. AI is going to expand. We we have a lot of things clearly taking our empire down, which yeah. some of them needed to happen. You know, I mean, our, yeah. our financial might, our our military might needs to be diminished in the world like yeah but if we actually had the power to change things and we got our government to change their foreign policy on some level it could impact all of this it could impact our healthcare system we we could make things better here by bettering our place in the world getting out of this bullshit war not making the world hate us joining every other industrialized country with universal health care. These are all doable things that we could actually possibly change. But that's why this Palestine war is actually front and center for progressives. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, as you just said, it's also um, another piece of evidence in how our government is not a democracy and they don't listen to us at all, whether it's healthcare, free public college, legalizing weed, the Green New Deal, like all right. these things, ceasefire, majority popular, and they're just gonna ignore us. I mean, the fact that Biden just went around Congress, Biden who said that he couldn't uh, go around the parliamentarian so that we could have a $15 minimum wage, which is already so much beneath what it should be. But he's now gone around Congress twice to give more arms and funding to Israel and then says that he's feeling really frustrated uh, by how you know Netanyahu isn't taking him seriously. He's not frustrated, he keeps giving him arms. He's just trying to distance himself so he doesn't end up in The Hague also, which of course he won't because we totally delegitimized ICC and said that we would invade them uh, if if they ever brought someone from the U S or Israel to their court. So I don't know. Yeah. We're fucked. Look, <laughs> we're fucked. Look, the, uh, Timothy, the Timothy Chalamet, come yeah, help us. Whatever. Be a hero. <laughs> but with the, with the public, this is where it's always like progressives latch onto the moment of the issue that matters. Uh, that's front and center center to the public. And the public is very in tune right now with the disinformation about Palestine and their powerlessness to change things. That's yeah. why you have all these protests everywhere. Yeah. No politician can speak anywhere without getting interrupted. Yeah. God bless everyone. Yes. With the direct action getting out debate, there. Yeah. Every single public Absolute, town forum. Yeah. Um, but that's where we can connect. And, you know, that connection extends people to the next step in right. my mind of acknowledging healthcare. This, yeah. This is where we to have me, our power. It's the same sort. It's a continuum of the next most obvious thing our government is failing on is healthcare. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you. I, I agree with you in theory. I don't see it optimism. happening. I don't, not, I don't have the optimism. optimism down, but that's, that's where we can. Yeah. I think that is. Yes. And certainly seeing the mass actions happening to try to force the people in power to make a change is inspiring. And 
I do have hope that we can possibly keep taking that to the next step. You know, I just keep thinking of all the people who are being massacred every day. And, you know, there was a, I'm, I'm sure many of you saw it and I didn't want to show it here, but, you know, the father of a doctor who is performing an amputation of the leg of his own daughter on his kitchen table as oh. Israeli military are surrounding him. And, there, you know, there's a very graphic picture of it. And this is happening 10 times a day in Gaza to children. Um, so, you know, yes, I hope I hope that these actions change something. But in the meantime, it is, you know, they just bombed, I think, the last surviving university in Gaza. They've completely destroyed it. No. It's unlivable. They are thinking now that more people are going to die in the Israel, next year from starvation and disease. They have the, nothing, none of the angst against them, the obvious disagreeing with their policies from everyone in the country and the world has changed a single thing they've done, which only has empowered them at this point. So I don't, I don't, I think it's fucked. I think they, I think they've already won because whatever happens from this next is, I mean, they've won the first phase. Is it good for right. them, their country in the long run? No, it's terrible for, right. for their country, but that that's what leadership does in, in capitalist worlds in, in, you know, Netanyahu, his own, everyone's self-interested in politics. So he's going right. to stay in power longer if there's a war, which right. only exacerbates his interest to amplify war with Yemen and Saudi yep. Arabia and Iran. Iran. <laughs> I mean, you know, so, yeah. but all these people, they benefit short term in some yeah. way. And the, the public is fucked the whole time. Yeah. So, my point with that is that no matter what happens, like they've already destroyed so much, the, the, yeah. the uh, hospitals, the schools, everything, all the, the infrastructure, you can't go back to this. So we're already at a point where, well, what the fuck do you, how, what is the solution that benefits right. the people fucked by this situation the most? Right. And that solution is already awful. Like yeah. they, you can't make it that much worse. Well, and Jake Sullivan is talking about normalizing with the Arab states again, which is what, which ignores the plight of Palestinians. And he's talking about that just like in the last couple of days, which was the whole reason that the attack happened on October 7th was because Hamas, the leadership in, in Gaza was realizing that they were going to be left out of any sort of um, you know, self-governance by what Israel and the U.S. were doing with the other Arab nations. And that's right back where they're talking about. Like, I mean, the, the way the Biden administration is talking about the two-state solution with the Palestinian Authority, who are, who are wildly unpopular amongst Palestinians for selling out to Israel and basically just being like their you know, police arm. Um, there's just no, I, I don't think there's any clear idea of what happens the day after, even if you are no. not looking at the humanity and the people whose lives have been completely obliterated. There's, there isn't even really a plan. No. And I know we, we want to move on. It's been a longer yeah. show. We're trying to get this show shorter. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I do. Before, because I don't think we're going to come back to it. I want to show the video of the the thought killers. Oh, yeah, it's really good. I just, okay. I feel like this is such yeah. a good video and. We've had we it here for a few it. weeks and yeah, we should show it. So I'm going to show it. And we're, All right. We'll be back in a second. There's a clear pattern that Israel is targeting the best and brightest of Gaza. They are going, as you said, they're going after everyone who might provide a way of living a human life in Gaza. They so they're going after lawyers, they're going after medics, they're going after teachers journalists. and journalists. Yes, well, a very, I mean, one of the most, I mean, it's all so horrific, it's beyond words, but um, the, uh, the, the, the Al Jazeera had, was shut down in Israel. Um, and then the day after, they bombed and killed the family of the Al Jazeera correspondent in Gaza. 
So that was a statement. It was saying, we will kill your family. They didn't even kill him. They, they killed his family. Um, so I just want to, I, I think that this is part of uh, what needs to change is the narrative is that this is not, none of these are, um, are mistakes. That they're, they're targeting the best and brightest of Gaza because they want to destroy any remnants of human life in Gaza. They want to make it unable to do so. I just wanted to, you guys to talk about what you think Israel's goal is. Well, actually, they also target the peace activists. And it's shocking, even those who call for peace, they're targeting them. For example, they targeted my friend Ahmed Abartima, uh, the, um, the founder of the Great March of Return. He is my best friend, and he has always been one of the most vocal voices for the peaceful resistance, the unarmed. Um, yeah, that's really good, and it's exactly what they've done. And it's while, well, I'm going to mispronounce it, but while I'll... Duda, who is the journalist who I was referring to earlier, who was shown in that where they they didn't like his coverage of what was happening at the beginning and killed his family. But there's so many. I think we're it's over a hundred journalists at this point who have been killed, um, targeted with huge press jackets on, uh, killed by Israel and the IDF. How do how does a group? come to be designated a terrorist group? What do you have to do to be designated a terrorist group? Just be somebody the U.S. doesn't like? I mean, it's definitely changed based on the U.S. perspective. Like like you said earlier, the Houthis are now a terrorist group. They were a terrorist group, and then they weren't, and then they are. Yep. And it's all U.S. Like, why isn't the IDF considered a terrorist group? By the way... Another mother of a hostage just uh, today or yesterday put out a huge statement saying that the IDF killed her son, different from the three who were shot point blank, speaking Hebrew, I think shirtless, waving flags, white flags, saying, you know, th those guys, they were shot by the IDF. Um, yeah, so this is, okay, so this is different. I mean, this is terrorism for sure, but uh, is Israeli quadcopter drones opened fire on Palestinians who had gathered to receive flour brought by UN trucks. 50 Palestinians were killed and dozens more were injured. Um, Sorry, I thought I was showing the other, the Hannibal Directive. Oh, uh, yeah, that's okay. Which, um, does show, so the, the, uh, the aftermath of this, this was, this, so this, this fed the early media, all the destroyed cars and. Outside of the concert, right? at the concert. And, right. You know, we had reports from people at the concert that were Israeli on Israeli media saying helicopters were firing at us. It was Israelis. Yep. And all that was sort of dismissed by our media. And now there's a, an actual investigation that confirms it was the IDF helicopter shooting on Palestinian uh, Israeli concert goers. Because of the Hannibal directive. Right. So this is from uh Yediot um, a newspaper in Israel saying prevent terrorists from returning to Gaza at all costs, even if they have hostages with them. So they are saying that Israel ordered all combat units on the 7th of October to stop Palestinian fighters from returning to Gaza with captives at all costs. This was an order to use the Hannibal procedure. And this is from an Israeli paper. Um, and uh, I'm not going to be able to read all this. And it says at midnight, but then um, Arno Bertrand, who is posting this, has an addendum. And he said that there was a, a mistranslation, it should say at noon on October 7th. The IDF ordered all of its combat, combat units in practice to use the Hannibal Directive, although without clearly mentioning this explicit name, the order was to stop at all costs. So that's what we just said. It's estimated that about a thousand terrorists and infiltrators were killed in the area between the Otaf settlements and the Gaza Strip. It's not clear at this time how many of the hostages were killed due to the act activation of this command. In the week after the attack, soldiers of elite units checked about 70 vehicles that were left in the area between Otaf settlements and the Gaza Strip. These are vehicles that did not reach Gaza because on the way they were shot by a combat helicopter. And I have to say, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how, you know, everybody who talks about this on the media should be said, should be asked, do you condemn 
the IDF the way they do about Hamas. Do you condemn the IDF? Before we can even talk about it, I'd like Pierce Morgan, do you condemn the IDF, the IOF? Um, right. But yeah, so now it's been, it's very clear that hundreds of Israelis actually were killed by the IDF. And maybe that will be something that changes as more and more hostage families of hostages speak out as more, you know, there's the young man who is refusing to join the IDF, um, you know, which is illegal to, to fight that conscription. So he's going to be going to jail, but he's now like joined by 280 other Israeli teenagers. So, you know, maybe when it sort of comes from the inside, but that's the problem. It's like, it's, you know, so Netanyahu knows how unpopular he is, not, I mean, obviously with the left or peace activists, but even, you know, with people on the right, they don't think he's going far enough. Like, and he has all these criminal indictments against him. So his only hope of not going to jail is to continue this war right now. Yeah, he has no interest in stopping this at all. And the U.S. has proven powerless, but it's, it's not that we are powerless. It's it's that Biden chooses to be powerless because he's beholden to whoever's in his ear at this point. And if 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 he, our funding is allowing this. Our if if Biden came out today and said this is unacceptable, this is a genocide, genocide. It's over. They can't continue this. Yep. The world would stop for them. It, it, the, the the fight would have to end. We are the ones, us Americans, are the ones letting our government make this genocide happen. 100%, which is why they keep putting out this ridiculous thing of Biden being frustrated. You know, I yeah, think he's thinking whole... he can distance himself from criminal allegations. Yeah, he's trying, but they're doing the whole, what, what can he do? There's a Republican, uh, Republican Senate, you know. Republican yeah. Senate, we can't do anything. The parliamentarian, you know, he's trying, but he has no power. So that's the new spins. Like he can't control yeah. Israel's its own thing. They're doing what they can. Meanwhile, he, he's rejecting calls to have any group in the U.S. whatsoever investigate these allegations of a, a, a crime that the there's literally at the Hague right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Bernie fine. Bernie finally showed up and said, he won't say ceasefire, but we need oversight of what Israel's doing with our weapons in Gaza. And only a, a 10 other senators agreed with him. Yeah. 72 to senators what? rejected. So there you go. 